And so we are uh, VFX. Uh, we are a Fuse FX, and this is pretty much just going to be a breakdown of what it takes to create a VFX portfolio, uh, what we like to see from especially kind of like our juniors, uh, apprenticeships and interns. Um, but what you're going to see here is a little bit about our company and who we are within the industry and the industry as a whole and um, how to basically get your foot in the door um, and how to make those really important connections that can really shape the future of your career. So, um, you know, a little bit about a little bit about us. Uh, my name is Evan Sloan Angel. I'm the talent acquisition manager here at Fuse Effects. I've been in the industry for about 12 years now. Uh, <coughs> anything, anything you can think about in terms of uh, creating and hiring other creators, I've probably done it. Uh, I started off as just a guy with a, a hammer and a screwdriver looking to build sets. Uh, on stage and very quickly started to make some friends there and notice that people were without work. So I felt I felt like I had to help bring people into the fold there and really help them. Nice. Sorry, what? I think someone's mic's on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so I I just started to. Uh, basically develop my own talent pool without knowing it and hiring people to help build sets started as a 3D designer kind of creating those sets for uh, for other productions hiring crews and moved more in the direction of just really enjoying giving opportunities to people at some point I realized that was more my passion than um, basically being the designer myself and started giving more opportunities directly as a recruiter, a creative recruiter, and then now as a talent acquisition manager here at Fuse Effects. Uh, total, I, I just actually passed my 400 hire uh, earlier this month. So I think I'm now at like 402. Uh, <laughs> so really big milestone, really, uh, really proud of all the people that I have been able to, um, you know, secure work for. And, you know, I always say that the sign of a good recruiter is when you have repeat business. So you're about two years down the line, that person comes back to you because of the impact that that previous role had on them. Uh, so that's really what I see my point, uh, my position as. Uh, but now I would like to introduce the rest of my team. So uh, Michael uh, and Brenton, Michael, take it away. Cool. Yeah. Hello, guys. Welcome. I'm Michael Kurtz. I'm the talent partner at FuseFX. I cover TV recruitment for New York in our Atlanta studio, and I do some sourcing for our LA and Canada studio. And the journey how I got here was originally... I was just working at an average job and I was telling myself, I really want to be in entertainment. And my original job was not in entertainment. So I clawed my way through internships and crazy obstacles, you know, here and there. And I was able to get into Fuse, you know, after five rounds. Uh, I started January 2022 and I've been here over a year and it's been a blast. You know, I'm having a great time, you know, working with Evan and the great Brenton and the amazing squad at Fuse. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it on my end. So I guess I'll uh, pass the baton to Brenton. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm, uh, my name is Brenton Lowe. Uh, I am the talent program coordinator here for FuseFX. And I've been in the VFX industry for, I think two years only because I just graduated two years ago um, with a uh, degree in business in human resources and getting into VFX was actually a complete fluke um, out the beginning of the gate. And ever since then, I have honestly loved it so much. And I've been staying in here for so long because you just get to meet so many amazing people that have worked on so many cool things that you have definitely seen um, either through like streaming services or movies and you just um, get to recognize them as like oh my god that's the guy that um, made the Game of Thrones intro and it, and it's it's really cool to um, have those repeat experiences and and keep on meeting people but um, yeah here at Fuse Effects um, I, I manage all our recruitment related programs and I also help source 
um, for all our um, Canada offices as well. So yeah, that's me. Yeah, we're a, we're a small but mighty little team here and uh, very, very proud of us. And uh, actually to flip back to that one second, if you guys do want to connect with us, uh, you know, you can easily find us on LinkedIn. All of our, <laughs> all of our links are right there. Um, but yeah, a little bit about what VFX is. Uh, this is something that when you're first starting out as a, you know, as a junior, some people don't really know where that line in the sand is and, you know, what exactly the difference is between all the various departments. And we'll get into that. But roughly, uh, VFX is just any effect that is created digitally that, you know, maybe kind of gets into the reality and the uh, bridges that gap where you aren't sure if it's actually real or not. Those 3D renders can really push things into uh, a whole other a whole other way of seeing. So if it's more stylized, uh, it's not always something that uh, falls within to the, the VFX, but we're really looking and we're really proud of the fact that a lot of our, uh, a lot of our work is based in realism, uh, live action, and uh, we just, are slowly starting to go a little bit more in the direction of animation. Uh, so those animation jobs are there as well. Uh, and you'll actually see that in uh, in our reel here. So I wanted to kind of pause here before we go a little bit further and show you a little bit about Fuse, what we've done in the past uh, and where I think you'll kind of get a sense of where we're going in the future also watching this video. Now the audio unfortunately doesn't uh, isn't going to work probably, uh, but don't worry. Uh, you can just hum along in your head. It's not a big deal. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, I hope you guys heard that. That soundtrack was awesome. <laughs> uh, probably not, though. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So obviously, you can tell there's a lot of uh, a lot of productions there. That hopefully, you recognize we do work with uh, Netflix as well as Hulu, Disney Plus. Uh, you know, we're working with Apple. We have. AMC plus as well. So there's a lot of a lot of productions going on right now with us. Uh, but besides Fuse Effects, we also own three other companies around the world. So we are a global company. 
And uh, we all fall underneath the umbrella called Pitch Black. So Pitch Black was actually just launched uh, on the 18th of last month. But uh, we, we have the ability, especially us as the recruitment team, to bring in somebody, uh, have them working with Fuse Effects for a little bit, a uh, year or two. Uh, you really get to showcase your talent. And then uh, there are possibilities of actually you know, transferring you to our counterparts around the world. So El Ranchito is based out of Spain. Uh, so Madrid and Barcelona, they're living the best life ever. Uh, folks, they are in Montreal, Colombia, as well as uh, Mumbai, and then RSP in Australia. So we actually do have staff that we have been like kind of passing back and forth between locations. So if anyone really wants to move, they want to experience another part of the world, one of the coolest things about this industry is that it is a global industry. Like VFX is happening everywhere and we'll dive into other hubs around the world a little bit later, but uh, globally we have about 1400 artists around the world. Um, so, you know, we're really diversifying our, our community when we, when we talk about our expansion in particular. So uh, it's not just one location, we actually have 13 offices and you know myself i've actually had the uh, ability to actually go visit uh, three of our offices around the world and i'm planning on uh, going to take a trip one day to our barcelona team and then we'll <laughs> we'll get a chance to see and meet them um but yeah now we're going to dive in a little bit about in the departments in vfx and what it looks like to work in each one of those departments um so moving forward here, we have several uh, breakdowns in how our company is structured. So we have 2D and DMP, 3D virtual pipeline, editorial, and production. Um, by the way, I just uh, I just want to say, feel free to use the chat if you have any questions. Uh, the team's on standby to pretty much answer any of those questions in our chat as well. So uh, feel free to just ask away and we can also address it at the end um, and we're also open to doing any portfolio reviews it just <laughs> just occurred to me i didn't say that before so uh, if you are interested in having a little portfolio review session with either myself or our other uh, or brenton or michael we would happily you know chat with you find a time put it on the calendar we can make it happen today even uh, I'm available for another half hour even after this. So uh, gladly to chat with you guys if you have any questions moving forward. Um, but basically the easiest way to get into the VFX industry is to start off, you know, as an apprentice, as an intern. Uh, of course, we, you know, kind of pull people out of schools as well. But all of our departments start off at a junior level or an apprentice level. So, you know, if you come in as a, you know, junior 2D compositor, you would be working on things like muscle flashes. You would be working on uh, a lot of like blood spatter, uh, DMP. A lot of our DMPs have a background in traditional painting as well. So it's always seen as a big plus if you were actually trained uh, and you love painting and then you found your way into digital painting. Sometimes our portfolios that we see, especially from juniors and mid-level DMP, they have a split website where they it can honestly be uh, traditional painting of figures or landscape and then their you know, environmental DMP work or conceptual art. So when we are viewing portfolios for DMP, honestly, they're like my personal favorite ones because you just get to see this huge range of work. Um, and as we move into 3D portfolios, uh, a lot of, you know, you can basically go one of two ways. One is more of the creation. The other is focused a little bit more on uh, technical sides. So modeling, as well as creature development, hard surface uh, weapons. So sometimes, you know, when people get into asset building and modeling, uh, you really find that you love the simulation of, of seeing what happens to it when it explodes. And those simulations are, are really big in what we do here. Um, 
So the virtual production as well, that is fairly new. And that's really where we're looking to go and focus more in the future. The virtual production is, you know, if anyone's working in Unreal Engine or if you think you want to go into gaming, a lot of those skill sets are basically being utilized within the virtual production as well. So a lot of, you know, mapping, you know, you can create big scenes and environments and uh, create different levels of those. Uh, they typically, uh, because virtual production is so new that I would say, you know, you don't have to have years of experience in it for us to take you very seriously. Uh, you pretty much just have to have a passion for. Um, and pipeline and editorial, more of the technical side of kind of like the backbone and spine of our company. But a lot of programmers go into pipeline development and uh, tool development. And then, you know, for editorial, you could actually be doing like post editing, color grading, uh, a lot of different variations, and uh, even data wrangling, which would be putting you on set, working directly with VFX supervisors, uh, knowing exactly what data should be pulled so then our, the rest of the editorial team can uh, have at it. So production, uh, production is more of our management side. You know, if you find that you really have a passion for, uh, for just managing teams or wanting to know more about how the bidding process or the pitching concepts process is, is done, production is where it's at. Uh, when you're pitching, you know, you have access to all the reels that the company has. And uh, it's a really cool side of the company where you can say like, all right, well, we have to put a bid in for this deep space scene of, uh, I don't know, let's just say a, a wormhole. Well, let's go back into all of our previous shots where we have created that looks similar to that. And then you put those reels together and you pitch that off to um pitch that off to the production and production either says, you know, you got the gig or uh, we're going to go somewhere else. But typically it's aligned with your budgeting as well. So production is a pretty cool department uh, for people who, you know, maybe absolutely love this work, but can't really stand pushing pixels around all the time, but really want to be a part of it. I, I definitely think it's a great uh, side of the company for those. Michael, do you want to chime in with anything here? Oh, I was just busy with the chat, but um, no, I don't have anything to say at the moment. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, yeah, so speaking a little abstractly about everything's a little difficult, so I'm going to give you a quick little uh, version of what this looks like for us. So for hard surface modeling, you know, we're really focused around uh, really building out our creatures, building out spaceships. Uh, we're talking about buildings as well as cars and weapons. Uh, that reality of hard surface is, is a complex one and it takes a lot of time. And sometimes it takes uh, upwards to 12 people to really create the, the realistic side of these, uh, these assets. So when you're looking at all of these, just make sure that uh, the standard that you're viewing it at isn't, I have to make this creature by myself. We're making this stuff with several people. These are big teams. Uh, you know, We're probably talking about seven people within our digital map painting to really pull off this realistic style. So uh, you know, this is just a sense of what we're able to produce when we have our teams really focused on it. So uh, for 2D, for compositing, we're just layering in the flames in the background, layering in the smoke from the helicopter, layering in another uh, atmospheric smoke. So compositing is just stacking up those layers and uh, you know, really we're turning these shots out as quickly as possible. Working with Netflix and working with Hulu and Disney Plus Sometimes these shots come in and we have a turnaround time of about a month. So, uh, you know, you'll get about a uh, hundred shots to work on in that month and we have to divvy them up around everybody who, who's working with us across all of our different locations. Uh, a little bit more samples here of what it looks like. So hard surface modeling, 
down here with the 3D uh, debris destruction simulation. So that building, our FX team really designed that building and then creates the simulation, creates debris, uh, all that dynamic uh, smoke that's in there. All of that is created from our FX team. Um, so when you can really focus on it, when it's the biggest part of the season finale, sometimes uh, we're able to go this big and make like really, really big monolithic uh, destruction scenes, which is kind of at the core of who we are at Fuse Effects. Uh, one of the easier things to do for, for our 2D team is crowd simulation. And it's one of the things that I would say, if you're looking to get in as a junior or as an apprentice, it's a really good way to start. So crowd simulation is pretty much if you were to assume being on set and there's only 30 background there and they take shots of the 30 people in the various stages around this stadium, it's then brought to uh, brought to the VFX team, and then you just multiply those people. You can change shirts, you can kind of like change the way they're standing a little bit, but you just multiply these people. And so when you're talking about muzzle flashes, blood splatter, crowd simulation, those are like the three main things that we get our, our juniors in on. And uh, it's work that is so constant <laughs> that uh, almost every single production needs all the time. So uh, really honing in on those skills is, is a great way to make sure that uh, we know who you are. It's a very, very easy way to get on our radar. Uh, DMP uh, up here for the digital map painting. You can assume that pretty much those first three buildings were built for the scene. Everything behind it was uh, compiled and, and uh, painted in. So uh, really, really amazing. They can kind of turn anything into uh, an atmosphere. Uh, our team is incredible. So uh, a little bit more about what the process looks like. So for blood, blood splatter here, when we're, what's that? No, I was saying the blood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So up here in the top, uh, top left, this is what the original plate looked like, the original still. And as it moves forward, you know, we're just adding more blood. It kind of goes from a normal prosthetic to, uh, you know, ripping of the shirts and the jacket and blood dripping down. Um, so again, it's a, a, this is one of the key elements that we get our juniors and kind of lower mid-levels to work on. And now within our 3D department, this is... <laughs> This is one of my favorite things to see across the entire company when things start off just the simple of a guy looking uh, bizarre, and all of a sudden uh, we have we have this crazy monster. Uh, so this is pretty much what it takes to make all these creatures happen. Now, again, we don't expect everyone to come at us with uh, with a portfolio that looks like this. This is done within you know teams of people working for a little while on it, uh, several weeks on it. So, uh, but we start off in clay. Yeah, you know, we're going to ZBrush. We're really uh, adding in a lot of those textures, uh, and then eventually, you know, it goes through our texture for skin muscle team, and they really, really focus on bringing out that reality. Uh, same thing here with our particle and lighting. You know just kind of what this process looks like. Same thing. Yeah, this in this case, it's a lot of the tracking. So when the person's moving, if the person does move, that, uh, that entity has to move with them too. So, um, And back to our virtual production department. So this is our newest department. We've been really honing in on this for the past uh, two years or so, but working in Unreal Engine, working in Unity, uh, a lot of really cool uh, kind of gaming software. But then once it goes through that process of, you know, turning it into a realistic landscape with realistic movements in that landscape, we are then able to project it onto LED panel uh, wraparound walls. And then the actor just stands in front of that, cameras move around them, they act out that scene. If you guys have ever seen Mandalorian, that's pretty much the, the scope of it. This is where this is, it's kind of like been groundbreaking. 
And we have been, uh, we've built out our team. Our team is now, uh, they just came back from Barcelona. Uh, they're going to London in two weeks. So they are able to basically, you know, show up anywhere, set these screens up, uh, bring the actors into those scenes and then really make it happen. So our production team is really, um, really getting a chance to show the world what we can do. And this is a little bit about uh, the reality of, you know, coming in and having two weeks to put these panels up to showcase the talent here. And we have uh, LED paneling even down to the floor. So you can see the tracking marks on this far right image here where we know exactly where we should be, you know, putting in more environments, but these environments are created in pre-production as opposed to post-production. So uh, a lot of saving on money and time from productions, and they're really looking for people that are just like downright obsessed uh, with creating these environments here. And uh, Basically, when a person, when a character is moving and they're walking, the environment will be moving with them as well. So it's very dynamic in that sense. I uh, just want to check the chat. Is there anything that I'm kind of blowing past? <laughs> no, I'm all good with the chat. I've been answering their questions. Cool, cool. All right. Uh, so here's a little bit of uh, the breakdown <laughs> of, what we, of what we like to see, the program knowledge, you know, I suggest kind of screen grabbing this if this is something that you are uh, looking forward to and you want to know what we as recruiters like to see. Um, it really comes down to, you know, what knowledge do you feel like you are proficient in that you kind of know the best? Uh, at the top of each one of these categories are the, the programs that you, you know, ideally, sorry, let me go back, uh, that you ideally should be uh, focused in on a little bit more. So with uh, 2D and compositing, uh, Nuke is always going to be our bread and butter here. Uh, 3D modeling, Maya, I cannot stress enough the importance of it. <laughs> Every single person uh, that comes in here is at least dabbled in it to some degree. But um, you know, feel free to screen grab this, this shot. We're really just open to anybody that has, again, the passion, and uh, really looking to dive further into the software. Um, when we're starting off with our portfolio samples, I've mentioned it before, uh, we're talking about uh, blood splatter, uh, muzzle flashes, crowd simulation, and environmental design, 3D. The sample would be modeling, creature, uh, hard surface, asset modeling. A lot of people, a lot of juniors, a lot of apprenticeships, uh, that we're trying to fill, you know, we see portfolios of, you know, cars and weapons, uh, other kind of like shuttles and all of that stuff is so impressive to our team. It's a very easy way to get, uh, to get noticed, uh, lighting and rigging and motion tracking. Those are a bit more of the technical side. You know, if we're talking about lightsabers, lighting is the easiest way to describe that. Uh, and environments uh, designed for virtual production. You know, for virtual production, you can go one of two routes. There's the creation or there's the technical side. So if you get really, really hung up on like how a creature moves or you get really hung up on how, uh, how the lighting effect is realistic, you could be going more into like a TV technical director route or you can really focus on the creation focus on the environment and go more into uh, concept art as well. So uh, yeah, just a, a lot of lot of information here. And also but, CD, I'm sorry to cut you off. And also forth. Houdini is another program that they love hearing about and they use. So that's another thing. For sure. Yeah. Houdini is, uh, <laughs> I would say, the key element for our 3D team. Um, all right. So you know, a lot of, of what the BRIC Summit is about is it's kind of opening this door to uh, people who otherwise wouldn't be able to really figure out how to get into the VFX industry. Yesterday, I heard uh, that metaphor as pretty much the VFX industry is a closed door to most people. 
and it is it's almost impossible to break into if you haven't had the ability to maybe go to school for it or know somebody in the industry but uh i'm here to pretty much open that door and make sure that everyone feels like they can enter into this community this community is one that really prides itself on its talent we we care so much about talent that we you know kind of transfer people all around the world just so they can go work on a production that that they want to go work on so for fuse effects we have four locations atlanta new york vancouver la uh three out of those four are the top five um, top five cities to be in as a vfx artist uh we're also montreal and london we have folks in montreal uh, London is where, you know, if you really, really want to go, especially in the virtual production route, London is so focused on it right now. There are uh, about 12 or so different studios that are focused on it. So other uh, pretty much all major cities around the world have thriving VFX teams. So it is our view as uh, pitch black that we're trying to kind of tap in and reach people in those markets. So we aren't just solely focused in LA with LA's uh, 600,000 VFX artists. We're instead trying to go around the world and really bring in new voices into the mix. So when we're working with El Ranchito in Madrid and Barcelona, uh, when we are working directly with them, our conversations just flourish knowing exactly what uh, their day-to-day -day is, what their view is, and what their artistry is, is uh, a very interesting dynamic when paired with, I would say, more of the fuse effects side, where it's just uh, complete, you know, total destruction of cityscapes and, like, deep space, and they're more, like, kind of spirit, like, kind of dark-spirited work, and Every single day we get to interact with them and we get to interact with our friends in Australia and our friends in Mumbai. And it really just kind of brings everybody in and makes everyone's voices matter within this community. So if you're looking at possibly moving to Stockholm or Dublin, there are studios everywhere and you can really find opportunities, even in some of the main hubs, Fuse Effects being one, but also you know, other organizations that are here, they have studios everywhere in the world. So um, transferring is possible, moving around is possible, having your own remote uh, lifestyle is possible here. So, um, you know, of course, we as an industry are trying to expand out a little bit more and bring more voices in, but this is just a little example of how you find us. And not, not us always reaching out to you. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to kind of stop talking. And I'm going to open it up to Michael and Brenton to kind of tell us a little bit about their own experiences uh, finding talent. Yeah, so most of the great talent that has joined us, we've been doing most of the outreach for that. And uh, Yes, if you really want to get into the doors of VFX industry, please reach out to us through LinkedIn. I mean, LinkedIn is key. You know, I've been I hear people saying, "Oh, they apply on these other sides," but honestly, you get like a ninety nine percent success rate with LinkedIn. So yeah, definitely reach out through LinkedIn. That's our bread and butter. Uh, attending these events like is a big plus. You're ahead than most people. Some of the people are probably sleeping on their couch right now. So it's great that you're really you know, are invested with your career. And uh, yeah, uh, and I'm looking at this uh, slot right now, get uncomfortably social. Yes. And, you know, I always say you have to be uncomfortable to be comfortable. So, you know, if you really want to apply yourself, just yeah, LinkedIn, your resume, it has to be on game, your reels. And I say like apply like five to seven jobs a day, you know, just keep hustling until you get a recruiter to like say, hey, you know, so it's definitely, you know, knocking and kicking on the door is a good strategy in the like in a calm way, not a, an aggressive way. But yeah, that's uh, 
you know, yeah. And feel free if you have any more questions about that, I'll be happy to ex explain more about that. Um, and yeah, Brenton, you can add anything you want. Cool. Yeah. Um, I guess the only thing to add is like, yeah, um, a lot of recruiters, not, not even just us from each and every company, um, we work on LinkedIn nonstop. So the, really one of the best things you can do is just try to connect with as many recruiters as you can and try to get as many eyes on your portfolio or, or your real zone or anything like that. And usually doing that through LinkedIn is super easy. You can look up um, who recruiters are in specific companies. Um, you can look up production companies and everything like that. Um, it, it's a really good resource to use LinkedIn through everything. And as well for junior artists, um, we know you don't have a ton of actual work in. So things we really love to look for are good kind of personal projects too. Um, anything that showcases your skills, showcases that um, you have that energy and that um, just drive to want to keep on working on your craft. We love we love seeing that. So that's that's definitely something um, any any type of recruiter would want to see for junior artists. Yeah. And that that reminds me a lot. I did have one portfolio come come across my desk of a student that was just learning the ropes of Unreal Engine and decided, hey, I'm going to make my own uh, Batman video game. And that Batman video game had nine different levels to it, a uh, whole city of Gotham that as they imagined it, um, they figured out how to move these characters and have the characters fight each other. Uh, that person got an interview in about 30 seconds of me sending that reel over and the reel was like 15 and a half minutes long. Now that was a bit over the top, uh, and and again, prove the point in thirty seconds. But that's all it really takes. You know, it, the, your personal projects are very telling to us about who you are. So if you haven't had the ability, or if you have had the ability to work on these big productions, but you don't have the right to showcase it due to NDAs, uh, really having those personal projects available at the ready is is always very telling. We know who you are just based on how you handle uh, the environments. And uh, again, it took about 30 seconds for that interview to be nailed down. So one of the things that we're always looking for are 2D compositors. You may have thought I said this a million times, and I'm going to say it another time. Uh, 2D compositors are pretty much uh, what makes up our core. It's where we started as a company. Uh, to date, we have 47% of our uh, artists here are compositors or compositing supervisors. So, uh, you know, that one 1,400 member uh, employee number before, you can imagine that we're probably somewhere still within that 47% of probably about 700 of us uh, around the world are compositors here. So uh, globally, there are around 33,000 compositors uh, and uh, just focus on LA alone, we're almost at 3,000. So it's it's one of those things that not just us, but every single VFX company uh, we're constantly looking for. I remember having an interaction with one of my colleagues at, a, at another company and basically just said, you can't have that person uh, there's only two available compositors in this city, and they're ours. So we had this like outward uh, battle back and forth. So if you're really looking and trying to uh, you know find a way in, it's a great way to learn the ropes. It's a great way to figure out where you belong in a department, uh, just starting off in 2D. But moving forward, uh, we are, as I said, really prioritizing virtual production, as is all of us. So every single VFX team out there. Uh, we are really trying to kind of be the groundbreaking team that figures all this stuff out because it's so new. But uh, really focusing a lot of our money, energy, and time. So again, uh, Unreal Engine is the way to go. Maya is the way to go. Houdini, all those three uh, are really great if you want to get into 3D. Uh, again, going environmental or technical. Um, but... If you are open and you're uh, really looking to join our team, uh, maybe don't have 
the background and uh, the already happy experience from other uh, studios, this is definitely the way to get in this coming summer and fall. We are actually going to be uh, relaunching our apprenticeships. So that's a way to get in, kind of meet our supervisors. They turn into your mentors. Uh, within a, several weeks as an apprentice, uh, the hope is that we can bring you in, retain you, bring you on as full-time staff. The last time we had the ability to do this in Los Angeles, every single one of our apprentice, uh, apprenticeships did actually get a full-time offer to uh, work with us. And two years later, we still have three of them that are here. So it went from seven that were offered full-time jobs. A lot of them went to uh, other companies to hone their skills in different ways. And we still have three that are moving up into uh, an upper mid level right now. So really fantastic way. We we really like to make sure that you guys feel comfortable in your seats here as apprentice. And then we can just uh, you know, hopefully just bring you on and offer that position. So if you guys have any questions or anything, again, we would love to uh, chat with you, open this up to a little Q&A if you guys have any questions. But uh, there, are, there are email addresses. You can find us on LinkedIn as well. So if anyone has any questions, I'll be here for a little while and we'll just open the floor. Oh, we have a question right here. I'll answer it. Are apprenticeships remote? So yes, be, they yeah. are. They, they are remote. Um, and I don't know if I have the audio turned off here. Uh, I, I, I apologize if I do, but feel free to just drop a question in the chat. They are remote. Uh, as well as our internships, uh, they could be remote. It all depends on kind of what the, the position is. So if you're looking for 2D, every single artist that we have, especially in Los Angeles, is remote. I like to say that our offices are the most expensive ghost towns you'll ever see. Nobody is there. I am the only one that stands, <laughs> that sits there, and uh, this one guy and his husky dog. So <laughs> we are... We are talking to people all around the world. We're able to work with people all around the world as well. Yeah. Uh, any yeah. other questions? What are the expectations for a junior FX artist at Fuse? The expectations for, uh, do you guys want to take this one or I, I can? Um, Brent, do you want to add to that? <laughs> uh. I guess um, expectations for uh, junior FX artists mostly consists of just the small things, um, maybe like uh, minor explosions, some water simulations, um, really just basic things because because we know um, that you're coming in as a junior and we don't definitely definitely don't expect too much. Um, but again, those personal projects, the anything that would showcase. Um, maybe a good liquid sim or maybe a good um, fire simulation um any anything that is kind of on the basic um, early side and yeah yeah things like that so uh, another thing I would add on to that is uh, you know I did mention earlier that our supervisors are your mentors so when you come in to work with fuse effects uh we aren't we aren't expecting you to become a senior overnight. You are, in that sense, almost as good as your mentors are. Uh, everyone comes in at different levels, and we are here to basically assess where you're at and figure out what your skill set is. So everybody has different skill sets. You could come in as a compositor and really just maybe not figure that out or not have the passion for it, but figure out like, hey, maybe you're more suited for production and becoming a production manager. So when you're in these seats as apprentices, uh, it's keeping an open dialogue with your mentors and your managers in those positions and what you would like to move forward as. Because as a company, the only way that we can determine our success rate uh, with apprenticeships is if we retain them and if we offer them uh, positions. And we are only able to do that if we have an open communication with what you're looking for and what your needs are. So I wouldn't say 
that the expectation is that you come in and nail it everything right away. It's, you know, be open, make sure that you are expressing what your needs are, where you're at, where your interest is. And it is on us as a company as well to foster you inside of this team. So uh, it's a really, it's a really interesting dynamic. Uh, and our manager, our managers here are not just being trained on how to be managers, but rather how to be a really great mentor from people all around. Yeah. Any other uh, questions? Yeah, and I'll answer this one. So for, for junior artists that already have experience at other companies for a while, is there a job opportunity at Fuse other than the apprenticeship uh, program? So yeah, um, you know, when I uh, source for candidates, um, if they have uh, experience working for other VFX studios like Crafty, Weta, Powerhouse, Phosphine, uh, that definitely gets you in the door quicker, you know? And when I work with our hiring managers, that's what they're also looking for too. And I know it's tough because some people, you know, how, how do you start? Where where do you start to get in? And I always say, you know, internships, apprenticeships at well-known studios. But if it's like at like a really bad startup, don't do it. I don't recommend it. I've been through the crazy uh, internship hole. Um, but again, like I said, you know, internships and apprenticeships at like our studio and other great studios, that's fine. Um, but yeah, just be careful where you apply to. Um, and another way of getting into the industry, just want to add on to this is, you know, you can also get your door into as like an executive assistant or office coordinator. And those roles really lead you into, you know, working in production or within an artist role. So I've seen that happen many times, not only in our studio, but other studio locations as well. Yeah, I, I think maybe to go back to the question of, you know, let's just say you already have this experience working with another company. Uh, it really comes down to pretty much your time that you spent there. Uh, you know, were you able to make those connections? You know, one thing you have to keep in mind is this industry, even though I'm giving you numbers that say there's 33,000 compositors uh, in the world. The other number was 2,800 compositors in LA. So even though that may seem like a lot of people, it's actually a very small niche uh, industry. So we have actually worked with almost every single person and every single one of our competitors. Uh, it's a cyclical type of environment where if somebody works with us, uh, then they go and they go work with one of our competitors. We will inevitably have them work with us again, maybe in a year or two. So uh, I think this is where referrals is super helpful. Anyone that you know that may have worked with us either in the past or currently is definitely uh, the quickest way to get an interview nailed down and get you in front of our hiring managers. Um, outside of referrals, it is portfolio. I think when you send your portfolio that that you have worked on, uh, that you do have the rights to show us either password protected or not, uh, those portfolios really important to give us the shot breakdowns of what exactly you worked on. We have some people, uh, and this is this is kind of the opposite way of like how to not get hired. I would say. Uh, we have some people that send us portfolios that uh, are just like the finalized scene in Star Trek. And and they're like, I worked on this. And we're like, what did you do on this? Like, <laughs> you did not do all of this. Like, it, they're, the credits of Star Trek are almost three and a half minutes long, and it goes at double speed. Like, you did not have every say in the shot. So tell us what it is that you did. Were you like the lighting, the rigor? Um, you know, if you have permission to uh, show us, like even in stills, what that shot breakdown is or what programs you used in that process, those things really matter. Um, and I say that for any level of people, uh, any level of artist, you know, I've, I've unfortunately seen big giant question marks come up on people that send in reels that uh, are just 
finalized scenes of the production that was released. So uh, it's really a matter of how you speak to what you did in each one of those shots. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, so um, from Andrew Chang. So are there any positions for people with little to no 3D software experience? I am a 2D concept artist with limited knowledge of 3D software, but I did see that Fuse has character slash creature concept art services. Uh, yeah, for sure. So um, I, I take it, this is pretty much like illustration, uh, like an illustration background or an animation background. Uh, feel free to drop it in the chat here. <laughs> Just wanna get, get a little more context. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, so one thing, I don't know if you were uh, online when we were showing the reels, but we are looking to get more into animation. Uh, we have worked with Netflix. We just released Wendell and Wild, uh, which is an amazing animation if you guys haven't seen it. But uh, in order to get ahead, uh, in order to get into the VFX industry, everything starts with conceptual art. So as an illustrator, uh, if you can show us those concepts, if you can show us maybe that you spent some time working in, uh, you know, Nuke is a very easy program to kind of uh, familiarize yourself with when you're first getting started. It's more just like compiling uh, and layering. So I would say like dabble in one of those programs that I can actually bring us back to that screen if you guys need it. But you know, really kind of focus in on learning one of those programs uh, alongside with your illustration. So then when we do drop you into one of these more, you know, kind of technical roles, uh, you would know your way around at least one of the software there. So uh, as you get in as an artist, even working as an apprentice, we still like to see that people have familiarized themselves with that software ahead of time. Cool. Uh, got another question. So this might be yep. similar to my last question before, but what kind of creature slash character animation does Fuse effects in their projects? I noticed there is VR involved when I saw that slide. Yeah. So, so what's really interesting, and I'm actually going to kind of send us backwards here. Uh, so pay no attention to all of this. Uh, so this shot, I believe is what you're talking about. And this is, this was done in 3D. This is done in like Maya and, um, you know, ZBrush and a lot of other, uh, a lot of other like Houdini type of programs. However, our virtual reality team is currently kind of working on this, this shot right now. And they're trying to see if they can get our uh, Unreal Engine team up to the ability of of this level of realism. And obviously being a gaming engine, pushing it into this level of realism is uh, is going to be a major accomplishment, but that's really what they're trying to do. So um, going back to like, what kind of creature work do we like to see? Honestly, this is, a, this is part of our creature work. Um, these robots are part of our creature work as well. So it's more open-ended. It's, uh, I would say, if it's really stylized, like really cartoony, just try and keep pushing yourself a little bit more to get into kind of like the realism side. Because again, VFX is a pulled a little bit away from like gaming. It's a little further beyond uh, than that. So the further you can kind of hone in your skill and trying to make the the animations look realistic, the, the quicker you're going to be able to uh, get into this industry. Again, keeping in mind, all these were done with tons, of, uh, a dozen artists on one project. So we don't expect the world from you, but <laughs> just getting close. Anything else? I think that's about it. I think that's all the questions. Okay, well, um, you know, I'll be hanging around for a few minutes and I'll have the chat open here. Uh, but guys, I, I really appreciate you taking the time. Looks like we are right at time. <laughs> Uh, but if you would like to have a chat with either one of us, um, if you feel like uh, I'm a scary guy and you want to talk to Michael, uh, feel free. Uh, we can set up we can set up any sort of uh, communication here. 
if you want to have your own portfolio review, which is uh, really, I think, initially what this meeting was supposed to be, um, we're open to doing portfolio reviews as well, so we can get those on the books. Um, you can drop your email in the chat, and we'll just be like corresponding back and forth to nail down a time and a date to do that. Um, but when you are looking to kind of move in and reach out to us, you can uh, connect with us on LinkedIn and you know ping us, send us a message at any time. Uh, again, we have our apprenticeships coming up. We'll be looking to um, looking to hire for those apprenticeships in about two months or so. So uh, that kind of gives you some time to maybe focus and maybe learn and click around in some of the software that we mentioned before. I'm going to put us put the screen back to the software here in case anyone is curious uh, wherever that is. And you can go ahead, screen grab this, uh, kind of look at, watch tutorials, watch videos, uh, and just let us know what, uh, what programs that you're really learning. And when you reach out to us, you know, cover letters are always great if you're going to be submitting to jobs, uh, especially if you are looking to pivot your career um, and pivoting, meaning like, hey, you were a DMP, but now you're looking to get into, you know, virtual production like, please send us a cover letter. Uh, we always want to see where you guys are at. Everyone is at different levels. Everyone is uh, on their own path. And just because your resume may say one thing for five years, it doesn't mean it has to say that for another five to 10 years. Uh, everyone's always evolving in this industry and we are totally open to it. So uh, anything else I see that our, our chat kind of blew up. But. <laughs> Yeah, the portfolios, email addresses, we got them right here. <laughs> right on, we did it. 